This entitled mom is stuck in a virus testing site and her rage is about to go full Super Saiyan. But what she does next will put everyone's health at risk. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. So I'm a 21 year old male from the UK and work temporarily at one of the virus testing sites. I'm not going to give any specifics, but I'm based up north and have been there for a few months. These sites, at least the one I work for, are built in public areas near major cities using government money, have to meet government standards in terms of safety and procedures, however, are not run by government staff. Most of us work for private companies and are paid to supervise the testing procedures for individuals with the test booked for a specific time slot. It is also important to note that as testing has advanced, most tests are now administered by the patient in their own car, with the window up, and there is minimal contact with the staff and those getting tested. Tests consist of a cotton swab of the back of the throat and nose for a maximum of 10 seconds each before the swab is sealed in its container fluid. The patient will pull up in their car to one of the testing bays, call a number on their phone and talk to a staff member about testing procedures whilst also getting their questions answered. They are told under no circumstances must they roll down their windows or get out of their car, instead to beep their horn in an emergency. This is non-negotiable for site management, as whilst we always wear the correct PPE, personal protective equipment, and practice good hygiene, it massively cuts down our potential exposure to the virus. Hope that all makes sense. Now on to today's events. Entitled Mother, EM, Entitled Dad, ED, and their daughter arrived at our testing bay and initially called a number to one of our phones so I could speak to them in the car. Phone rings. Good morning, this is OP and welcome to testing. Have you been tested before at all? How long is this going to take? I can't believe you made my daughter wait so long. We have a dinner reservation at 7pm. It was 3.30. Me taken aback slightly. It shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes if you are only testing your daughter. Have you got hand sanitizer and tissues with you? Patients have to blow their nose before administering the test. Isn't that something you should provide? This is a field hospital after all. Note this site is absolutely not a hospital and is not advertised as one. I have no idea where he got this idea from, as it is based in a large car park and split up into sections by only traffic cones and tape with very few temporary buildings. Not a hospital bed in sight. Me seeing where this was going. No sir, you are advised to bring your own, but we can provide you with tissues and gloves if you need them. And I'm sorry, but this isn't a field hospital, just a temporary virus testing site. There is a hospital nearby if you need to seek medical attention, but none of the workers here can provide you with primary care. At this point, EM had reached out of her window and whilst coughing violently, I might add, snatched the testing kit for her daughter out of the hands of my colleague, who was still adjusting her mask and visibly jumped back in shock. Before we could even think about saying anything, ED drove off to complete the test. Whatever. Sometimes people can be difficult when nervous about taking a virus test, especially if they are doing it themselves. We brush it off and spend the next few minutes watching the car in case they call us over to ask for help. Nothing. The car sat there for what seemed like forever before we all jumped out of our skin as ED was laying on the car horn. Running over in what I thought was an emergency, he cracks the window slightly so I can hear him and immediately starts shouting. This whole thing is ridiculous. I want to speak to a consultant now. Confused and thinking he meant my manager, I say, is everything okay? Can I do anything to help you or get you any help? EM leaning from the back seat. You can lean in here and swab my daughter for me. This is absolutely beneath me. She muttered the last bit with a disgusting look on her face. I'm sorry miss, I'm not allowed to administer the test for you, but I can talk you through it if that's something you would need. What I need is for you to get three doctors over here to carry out this test on my daughter. I can't believe there isn't a doctor free. As Edie lays on the horn again, shouting for a doctor. For the next 10 minutes or so, I try to explain that no, we don't have any medical professionals on site. And this is not an NHS run hospital. Before I hear EM say, I'm sure the doctor will see you if you need a test. 
If you don't get one over here now, I will give you a reason to test you. What happened next was surreal. EM swiftly opened the rear passenger door before barreling towards me in the middle of the car park, coughing and spluttering everywhere. I continued to move away from her, reaching out to maintain the distance between us. I could make out what she was shouting, but after a few seconds she tried grabbing my wrist, which tore off my glove on my left hand. If it didn't already, all heck broke loose as EM ran back to her car with security chasing after her. I believe police arrested her later, but I chose to scrub my hands a few hundred times and change my PPE instead of watching the show. I just feel sorry that little girl didn't get her test. One of the terrible side effects of this virus is that it gives entitled people this sneaky way of going on a power trip. Because anyone could be infected, and of course nobody wants to be, they can make all these crazy threats of infecting people, and what are you supposed to do? I just feel like the pandemic has emboldened them even more. I don't remember a time before this when people were willingly coughing at other people just because they wanted to get their way. It's just disgusting. I work 15 hour shifts at midnight. Think 6 p.m. to 7 to 8 a.m. at minimum. I do 4 on 3 off, usually. Sometimes, if the other boss is off, I'll pick up one or two of his days. So when I work, I'm very, very tired. My husband has gotten laid off due to the virus. In the beginning when crap hit the fan, so he was home a lot more often, which means his best friend, Drama Goblin's husband, is always at my house as well. He's hiding because he can't stand being at home. There for a bit, my husband would get us a babysitter, and he would have a few drinks with his buddy while I worked. Anyways, on to the adventure. I wake up after working my last 15 in a 5 day stretch. I had been exhausted when I laid down. No one is home. Not my husband, not my kids. I call my hubs and he tells me the kids are at his mother's, and he is at Drama Goblin's. He'd gotten drunk and knew he was gonna start being loud, and last time he woke me up like that I flipped my crap. Go ahead and judge, but I did say 15 hour shifts. He then sends me the most pitiful message along the lines of, Help me, this was a mistake. He calls Drama Goblin's hubs, his best buddy, to come get him and drive him around the back roads and hang out. Instead, DG's husband brought him home with him because he and Drama Goblin were having an adult discussion, and he's left in the middle to come save my husband from my wrath if he woke me up. They put the watchman for their kids and my hubs while they talk. LMFAO like he's a kid. Sorry, I can't help but laugh. Anyway, I get there to pick up my husband and bring him home, and I go to knock and the door is open a little. I come in and walk on the piles of trash through their house. There is no path and kind of wave at Drama Goblin who is sitting full face in the door. I don't see her husband but I hear him, and then head on to the television room where my husband has told me they are. The three little kids are there, no husband. I sit down thinking he'd gone to the bathroom. He comes back leading the autistic son with him. He snuck out while my husband was in the bathroom, and even though Drama Goblin was facing the door, she's who I waved to, her son got by. Honestly, both parents should have been aware of him. He's kind of a danger to himself. He gets out constantly. Well, her husband apologized, comes on to talk to us and Drama Goblin stays on her phone. While we're chatting, the five-year-old goes up to my husband. I try as hard as I can not to go over there. It breaks my heart. But they know him, and they know he will help when Drama Goblin won't. She says I got a potty, and right then, the son starts trying to sneak out again, and Drama Goblin's husband goes after him. He starts having a tantrum, and the husband is very busy dealing with this. Drama Goblin hasn't moved or looked up, I give my husband the let's jet look. We go to leave and the five-year-old comes back, but this time she's talking to Drama Goblin. Mommy, I pooped. Come clean me up. No response. My husband and I look at DG's husband, who is trying to get the tantrum moved to his room. He could hurt one of the little ones when he gets like that. Mommy, please, I poop on me. Again, totally no concern, still typing on her phone. She kind of pushes her off her. At this point I go over and take the girl into the bathroom and help clean her up. When we're done, she says, Thanks, can you get the poop out of my room? Wait, what baby? Five-year-old says her baby sibling has pooped on themselves and smeared it on the bed rail, wall and carpet. I take a peek thinking this just happened. Nope, it's human poop, dried and flaky, and it's everywhere. And it has been there for a while. 
I was mad. I straight up tell Drama Goblin, there's crap in there, you need to clean it up. She barely even acknowledged me, just sort of shrugged. I'll get it later. I already told them. Like, just now when five-year-old needed cleaned up? Like I said, I was angry. My husband is grabbing my arm, guiding me to the door. She shrugs again. I'll get that too, I'm busy right now. I got it. Drama Goblin looks up, stares into my eyes for a second or two. Can you get their room too? I just can't bear the smell. We left. I've heard a lot of crazy things from entitled parents, but that level of neglect has to be some of the worst I've ever heard. They can't help themselves, they can't clean up after themselves, you need to be the one who does it. What could be so important on your phone that you neglect to do that for who knows how long, it was dried so it must have been like hours right? That's the sort of thing that would make you want to never want to go over and visit again. If they showed even an ounce of care you'd think that okay maybe they're just in a really tough spot and there's just crazy things like this going on. But she was completely apathetic. How do you even begin to intervene and help someone like that? Somehow they don't even see that they've done anything wrong. I work at a middle school, so I get my share of entitled parents. I had the encounter with this one this afternoon. I work IT, in an area with a lot of poor people who don't have an internet connection, or any devices to use internet at home, or so they say. At the beginning of each school year, part of my job is to help parents that need to fill in their request for financial aid online. They come in the school and we do it together. Because there's the virus this year, they have to take an appointment beforehand, so we can reduce the number of people in the building at the same time. They also have to wear a mask as the law says. So far, all people were good and grateful, because in the end, most parents are normal people. However, this afternoon came in Mrs. R. Mrs. R came without a mask. She apparently made a fuss when the welcome desk refused her entrance without a mask. However, she gave up and put on the one that was in her pocket when she understood that the lady at the welcome desk was more stubborn than her. Or anyone else on earth, I swear. I knew there that she'll be a problem one. So instead of going to the office I usually use, I went to the one that shares a door with a very thin wall with the principal's office. So we sat. I turn on the computer and start stupid idle chat while waiting for it to start up. We're in a public middle school. Our computers are older than some of our students. So, how are your kids settling down here? That's none of your business. Okay. Problem one. I knew it. I shut up and we wait in awkward silence for the computer. And then the website starts up. Okay, what's your school's ID and password? Why do you need it? So we can fill in the application. I'm not telling you. Mrs, I'm the one who creates the account and gives it to you. I can go to my office and retrieve them, but that would be 20 more minutes. Or you can tell me now and it'll take 20 seconds. You mean you have access to my private school account anytime you want? That's illegal. I'm bound by law to never ever reveal whatever I see on said account. I could lose my job and my freedom at a huge fine. If I ever abuse it, think of it as your doctor's secretary. It's the same, but all the school's information instead of medical ones. She doesn't look that convinced, but still gives me her ID and password, and we complete the application. She tries to cheat one time or two, but the second I accidentally put up the school file on the monitor, she stopped trying to lie to me. She gave me a hard time when I asked her about her financial situations, but I made perfectly clear that without that, we can't apply for financial aid. So how much will I get? I can't tell you, I'm not the one that calculates it, but someone in your situation usually gets almost full financial aid. Almost? Yes, you already got the government help to buy New Year supplies, so this one will cover school lunch. And how much is it? Well, there's not really money involved in this case. Your kid will have free access to the school cafeteria each day she is at school. So if she eats only once, well, it will be £3.70. If she eats every day, well, it will be much more. So I say how many times my kid will eat at school. I get the money and I'll have to transfer the money I got to the school? No, you actually won't see the money. It'll go directly to your kid's lunch account. But that's not fair. It's my money. That's out of my hand. I'm just explaining to you how it works. 
but I want my money. She then managed to explain to me at length how we are stealing her money and how it isn't fair, and then something crosses her mind. Okay, what if my daughter doesn't eat at school? Then you don't get the money. Usually it amounts to a lot less since they consider that eating at home is less expensive than eating at school. Now let me remind you that kids aren't allowed to eat outside of the cafeteria and they can't bring their own food inside the lunchroom and that you live 40 minutes away from the school. The lunch break is one hour and a half so it's kind of short to eat at home. She's too fat anyway. Skipping a meal won't kill her. I need the money. You're gonna cancel her enrollment for lunch. Me stunned. I, um, that's principal shouting from his office. Send her in to see me immediately. I do not know exactly what happened after that between them, but I'm pretty sure that the principal will involve authorities. If anyone wonders, most parents love the system. They do not have to worry about making sure the lunch account is balanced, so it frees up their mind of at least one worry. And our school lunch is a three course meal made by a real cook with fresh organic products. So it's not like the kids are forced to eat disgusting US school cafeteria food. Man, I was always so jealous of the kids that would always have school cafe lunches like every day. I don't know if they were pinching money from their parents or they were just well off and their parents didn't care so they'd just give them money every day. I was just grateful anytime I could find two bucks and I'd buy myself a chicken burger and it's just like the best day ever. My alternative was always a squished peanut butter sandwich so as you can imagine I was pretty grateful anytime I could get something from the school cafe. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.